Welcome everyone, my name is Aaron Huxa, Product Manager for Medical, Pharmaceutical and Laboratory. Thank you very much for attending PCB's webinar, The Challenges of Medical Devices and Laboratory Quality Management Systems, New Paths and ISO Standards. This webinar is going to be presented by PCB partner Vladimir Simic, experienced consultant, professor and managing director of EuroQuality Group. Vladimir, please you may start the presentation. Thank you. Hello, everybody. This webinar really has the main task to give some uh, answers on uh, several whys. Of course, I'm joking. I'm not thinking on the famous Japanese five whys, root cause analysis methodology. But I would really try to brief you and to introduce you to uh, what are the basic standards we need to take care of, what are the the basic problems in implementation, what are the accreditation and certification schemes medical devices and laboratories need to be addressed and fulfilled, and what to consider in the implementation of all these problems. Anyway, the basic issue is really why this business environment is so important. First of all, we need to attack first why. This is a great business. This is a great money which is earned and which is produced, sells and used all around the world. Some uh, data from Australia for the Medicine Magazine and from Virgin Jane from UK, expert organization said that we have now more than 300 billion United States dollar in this field. With the forecast for two years, it will be almost 400. It is really a great job. Nevertheless, the great amount of interesting party which is connected, let's start with the subcontractors, let's start with the vendors, let's continue with the manufacturer, laboratories, healthcare, patients, government and public community in general. This is a really a very complex business environment operations and uh, meaning that the management system needs to be complexer organized. Let's remind you on the accreditation and certification activities. First of all, accredited body which is working according to the ISO 7011, this is the rule for their operation, are accredited, meaning uh, pronounced competence and give approval to laboratories for testing and calibration, like example, according to the ISO 7025 or to the medical laboratories 15189. Then inspection bodies uh, according to the 7020 and, according, and to certification body according to the ISO 1721 for management system certification for the uh, people person certification this is the ISO 7024. I just added that the PSCB is the one of the famous schemes in the earth uh, have approval according to this scheme. Also, we need to recognize the ISO guide 65, which is connected with the uh, <laughs> SAN standard 45011, which is dealing the product certification. Meaning that there is a lot and very well organized schemes all around the world for the businesses of certification and accreditation. Let's return to the medical devices. If we want to start earlier, we need to return to the 96 and 97. In that period, the first edition, first version of the standard 13458 appears and additionally standard uh, uh, 13444, which is the implementation guide for the implementation. Now the standard is changed and the last edition, which is the ISO standard, it is from 2003. Very additionally, guidelines and technical reports are the standard 4969, which is really a good guidance for application and for implementation of this medical device uh, Standard. This is the certification part. Let's look a little bit on the product certification. The product certification is mainly regulated by the international, regional or national 
accreditation rules. And when we're talking about the European Union, we need to understand the European medical devices regulation, which is supplied in several documents, and CE marking, which is giving the performances and approval of the safety of the uh, products used in integrated in the medical devices and used in the medical devices. United States has also a very strong regulation, which is the famous 21 CPR part 200, uh, sorry, 820, which is the GMP practice of medical device regulation. Canada also, Canada is very important because you will understand later, and I hope you understand that Canada is the first country who implemented the strongly implementation of ISO 13485. Laboratory has uh, different approaches and they have a practice. At the beginning they start with ISO 9001 implementation, later on appears ISO 25, uh, transferred to the ISO 7025, addressing the quality management system at the technical requirement. At the end appears a specific standard for the medical devices, addressing the technical requirement, totally the whole elements of management system and the medical requirements, of course, which is for medical laboratories very important and crucial things. When we're talking on the risk in the field of this business, medical devices and laboratories, we need to understand that uh, risk is very present. The risk is connected with the safety. If you, and it is the opposite statement, if you have the harm of risk, increase, you will have decreased the safety. And it is very important to understand that risk management, and it is a very good idea, because the standard internationally, nationally, and uh, regionally establish a really a great amount of the standard. Look carefully, for example, at the sample of the EN standard, <laughs> European standard, produced by the SEM, Organization for Standardization in Europe. It is in the Syria, which is addressing the electrical equipment standard, there is more than 50 of them, which is giving really detail for electrical equipment introducing and used in the medical devices. That's the reason why the risk management is a very crucial issue in the medical devices and laboratory testing. Uh, softwares and applications are very widely used in this business environment and uh, you will find a really great amount of uh, standard specialized for software validation, software development, software testing, and any other activities which is really connected with the medical devices and testing. If you are addressing the management system in this environment, we need to understand that there is a great amount of the international, like uh, uh, some forums, organizations of United Nations, some global organization and some regional organization. I will just draw your attention of few of them you need to take care. First of all, I will remind you that in 1992, it is established GHDF. This is the Global Harmonization Tech Force. It is the voluntary group of experts and regulators which is trying to organize and uh, standardize all these businesses. They stopped working a few years ago and the uh, uh, International Medical Service Regulation Forum continued their activities but only included the regulators of the medical devices activities. I will just remind you on the very important expert organization from the United States is the Clinical and Laboratory Standard Institutes, which is a really very strong in the expertise. If you really look at the, every of the standard we are talking about in the references and the last pages of the standard, you will understand their strengths. There is a great amount of references, their guidelines, their standard, their internal standard, their recommendation, they are very, very strong. And if you really want to address the issue and every element of your management system standard exactly, please, my recommendation is address and read these books, use this recommendation. It 
is very, very useful to uh, literature. Global Forum prepare really a great amount of recommendation and standard. Uh, the regulator forum continue with this. In the May, a few weeks ago, they uh, recognized and they published a very interesting uh, standard of the software as a medical devices and including the element of risk categorization in the software implementation. This is very important. What I'm using these uh, issues and this publication very openly in the project and the practice in the when you want to, to inform something of that, it is the uh, list of countries and uh, recommendations, the standards and regulations in every country. And you can find a very useful data on the project you are preparing or you are interested in. Why those businesses really need a quality management system? I uh, point you the uh, importance of the business. The second is that's really a very complex operation, complex operation by operation, complex the whole system, system and the individuals is doing very complex tasks. It means that really we need to have absolutely need our accuracy, confidentiality, time effectiveness and cost effectiveness. At the end we need to add that all this operation generally has two types of clients. First part client and second part client. Imagine the nurse, doctors, any person in healthcare operation using medical devices or using the medical tests and the patients like a final client, final customer which is very important. This complexity of the system of course is very interesting and we need to address it. Uh, recommendation for certification is very understandable. It is almost the same as every other management system. You will approach easier. Clients, you will approach the market. You may have the outlines to improve your processes. Just to remind you that uh, 40,000 189 has a uh, 24 requirement for documented procedure. It means that some processes really need to, to be controlled. You will increase efficiency, meet the regulation. I think this is the basic issue for this business we need to understand. And you will you will look later on that connection between the regulatory requirement, customer expectation and the standard we are addressing for. for uh, to the ISO, ISO uh, documentation for the number of certificates, we have about 25,000 all around the world companies certifying to the ISO leading uh, us Very strong yes, China is uh, racing and Greece also. This is very interesting data about the number of certificates going on. Another thing which is very important for the implementation of certification, it is really internationally increasing acceptance of regulators for this standard. There is a really a great number of countries and region which is accepted the certification like uh, uh, verification components of uh, implementation of the regulation. Uh, following that idea, International Accreditation Forum two years ago prepared the MLA contract and MLA arrangement and the mark which is giving the opportunity accreditation body uh, making arrangement with itself to help the economy to help the industry, medical device industry, and medical testing industry to uh, give the international recognition of, of these testings. When you listen to them, it is a good idea, but very often from the practice, you have the rumor, you have the crimes. What is with the idea? Once accepted, accepted anywhere <laughs> in the world. It is really just uh, a good story for the moment. Accreditation body supports these activities, like for example, uh, 
the first United Kingdom accreditation services, giving the clients verification and opportunity that this is good idea to implement this standard. Very often, the practice as to really all medical device manufacturers need to be certified. Please be very careful with this issue, with this answer. Uh, look at the details of every country regu regulation, every region regulation, and then decide it. There is a great amount of international uh, expertise which is following all these things. And in the Canada case, for example, uh, all management device manufacturer are not need to be certified. The class one, which is devices that not provide the stereo or do not have measuring function, do not need to implement. But other classes are there. Please be very careful, very carefully with this recommendation. Another question is very interesting about the CE marking and the combination with the ISO 13455. It is not the same thing. CE marking is the demonstration compliance to the rights with the applicable European regulations. And ISO certification is a certification of a management system, including everything. In some idea, it is very recognized and it will be recommended to use it. You will look later on additionally changes to the standard which has been done two years ago in the Europe, ISO standard is not changed yet. Uh, it is in the final step of changes and it will happen this month, I hope. We will see how the ISO will decide it. But European Union, after the great scandal with the Brest implement and other scandals in the medical device industry decided to connect it, the European regulation directives, all three of them, with the standard. And that is done with the version which is European standard version of 13459 issued in 2012. Uh, the text of the standard is not changed so much. Uh, it, it is the same text, the same requirement, but they add annexes, which is called Z, A, B, C, D, and it is uh, connected and giving the references, directly references to European regulation, which is very good and very important. Accreditation body, understanding this situation, decided to continue with certification with uh, this combination and you have uh, a great amount of a standard look for example one sample from the United States CCI, all certification body are doing the same you can have this same certificate the same the ISO version standard 2003 and European version standard of 2012 it is also with the SGS for example and the Irish certification body of course it means on the market you we, you really have a situation that we have a certification default standard and the market is accepted. I will just remind you the, the basic uh, references for all this is the for laboratories accreditation are the old standard 1725. It is implementing generally in testing calibration laboratory and it is not in detail regulated the compliance with regulatory and safety requirement for laboratory operation. Later on, the standard is developed, a new standard which is addressing the medical laboratory. And it is really a great standard. First of all, it is great because it is really defined the way of testing and the way how the really laboratory can work. And I really like this standard. The two things are the point. First of all, 
in the clauses for, for 16, it is exactly addressed that risk management need to be implemented. Secondly, the clause for, for 70, which is implemented the quality indicators. This is really the first standard in the management system, which is very specifically defined the requirement and methods to address the quality of the product. And I'm very happy because of that. This is really a great announcement. You have a lot of additional uh, understanding about the responsibility in laboratories. Who is the laboratory director? Who is the quality manager? What is the management in laboratory? And this is really very useful standard, organized in a, a two ways, management requirement, technical requirement, and annexes, which are doing the explanation of the standard. When we are talking on the laboratories and medical devices, I will remind you on two standards which are very useful to have in mind and to use it. First of all is the good clinical practice in clinical investigation for medical devices for human subjects, which is ISO 14155, and the point of care testing standard, which is ISO 22870. This is a very interesting standard, and if you really want to implement in the everyday life, you need to address this issue and this standard of a standard sometimes need that with the regulation of a country. I just took a sample in the to have the investigation plan. United States regulation or the same thing are going further and they require investigation plan but agreement between the partners and the interested parties and the other PDA rules, which are very important. Every time when you compare and when you implement the both, you need to understand the details. And later on with the risk management, I will also draw your attention on some issues. I repeat it again and I recommend you to look at the Clinical and Laboratory Standard Institute. They are famous quality system essential, 12 elements starting with organization and ending with the plot improvement is really great methodology for the user. And they have a great amount of uh, recommendations, standards, guidelines, which is very useful. Please use it, look at it, take some ideas and implementing and additionally implement your system with this idea. Let's move to the risk uh, management idea. Uh, certification, this is a part of certification also. This is the something which is happening and which I think it will be growing very quickly. Anyway, how we define the medical devices and any equipment used for diagnose, threat, monitor, patient health, we need to understand that it is the process needs to be managed and it is the process needs to be addressed that potential risk to the entire product life service, life circle of the medical devices including development, manufacture and maintenance, disposal and the composition. You need to think on the part failures, of the system failures, of the influence of the people, of the complexity of the system, of the viruses, uh, electricity default, heat default, you, you really, there is a great um, hazard situation you need to take, take on and the standard give us opportunity and show us the way how things it will be done. We came very earlier with the first guide 51 which is the addressing the guides how the safety aspects and risk aspects need to be included in the standard. 
later on appears Guy 73, which is appears in 2002, first time. Later on, Australia uh, prepared their own national risk management standard, which is very famous. Uh, used more than 50 years. This is the third edition of uh, this standard, and this standard. 4360 is really used for the base for uh, preparing a new ISO 31000, which is the risk the base risk management standard now addressing. We have a lot of international organization and expert organization which is dealing some documents with the risk management. At the end in 2007 appears ISO 40971, which is really very applicable standard for the risk management in medical devices. Later on, in 2013, appears the guidance, which is the ISO TR 24971, edition 2013, which is the guidance for application of the risk management standard medical devices. Having in mind that, uh, again, that the softwares and uh, applications are very introduced, and very implemented in the medical device and laboratory testing. Uh, the Syria of standard of 27,000, which are addressing the information security management, is also reacting on this task. And uh, we have a specifically standard, which is ISO 27,799, which are addressing the information security management in the health security using 27,002. You have really a great amount of standard which are talking on the medical devices and laboratory testing. We need to understand that there is a lot of technical standard which is which are addressing the technical system, electrical, electromechanical, mechanical. Anyway, we need to understand that the medical devices is really complex. Uh, system, including electronics, electromechanics, mechanics, uh, rubber, plastic, style, uh, glass, whatever, and it is really very risky. It means that the risk management really needs to implement it. Standard give us opportunity and show us what is the risk management. We need to understand that this is the process. The process needs to be managed. The process needs to be included in all circle life, life cycle of a product. Very often in the practice, customer ask, when I need to start with risk management? The answer is very simple. At the beginning, at the beginning, everything you are working, any new project, any new product, any new test method, any new subcontractor evolution, any new people hire, everything at the new. And please do not stop. Do not cheese. It is very important. Risk management needs to be a process, continuous process, including. And standard really give us opportunity to understand, to understand the differences between the risk assessment and risk management, to understand how, how we can treat the risk, how we can control the risks and how we and what data we need to collect and to fill it into something which is called a risk management file which is need to be kept for all circle life of product. Management organization need to have the policy, need to have the risk management plan, which is the roadmap for risk management establishing the criteria for its acceptance, risk management file risk management report and include all the information in the risk management file. It is really a very good standard. I will draw your attention on the annexes of A, A to J, which is very interesting. You can find a very useful information, quick information on, in annex C, which is the answers on some questions which are interesting how to prepare the risk management plan in the Annex F, or the very specific guidelines for the IVD medical devices.
case. Anyway, it is really a very important standard, very important case. But anyway, standard give us really opportunity. Who is the, what's going on with the risk management? Top management is responsible to incorporation of risk management into the organization. Risk management activities are directed by a control process and need to be control process. Risk management planning is coordinating with design and development planning of any project, any product, any new test, anything new. Risk analysis begins as early as possible in the phase of development of anything. And risk identification accomplished by analysis various aspects of devices life support. Really various aspects of devices. It really very understandable and very useful issue. Standard give us Annex D, for example, give us a very good idea how it could be done. But I will draw you uh, and uh, try you to understand about two terms and differences between the legal requirement. I'm talking now on the European MDD, <laughs> the directives and the standards. Standard use the term as low as reasonable. And uh, regulation talk as far as possible. I hope that you understand that in the concept as far as possible, there is no rooms and there is no place for economical conclusions. And sometimes it is very terrible. It means that the requirement and the and the directives are much more stronger. And it's really terrible to fulfill. Second thing when we're talking on the standard and the same directive is the concept of the methods of the risk controls. There are uh, three, generally three types of methods used. It is the first uh, integrated uh, safety concept in the design. Uh, prepare, measure during the manufacturing of the process, measuring which is uh, control and take care about every operation, and at C, add the information for safety. MDD directive is not agree with this last control measure and said that it is the concept, it's need to be included in every measure implemented. It means that customers, clients, regulators need to have information about the safety. Standard allowed that that information is some risk needs can be the only measure can be implemented. At the end, MDD directives are talking about the control all risk, standard give us opportunity to control some risk, some control to uh, uh, manage on another different way, which is shown in the standard, of course. Standard give us a lot of samples about the evolution of severity, probability, give us a very good samples of uh, risk management in the metrics documents which is presented uh, whole situation, uh, Annex A, good sample of the hazard, hazardous situation and harms, which is very useful for uh, really everyday practice. Please use it, the standard is very... The last why I am wondering to discuss with you, it is really the importance of these three legs, these three stables. Medical devices, needs to have management system. Medical devices and laboratories, of course, needs to have management system. If they do not have an detected errors, system will be not functions. Risk management needs to be implemented at addressing the really risk to all around anti-process of life cycle of medical devices. If there is no risk management implemented, 
if the risk management is not well implemented. You will have no safety product. You will have no safety test. You will have no safety services. And the competency, the third one, is really the basic. Giving the opportunity to all tools are working well and giving the good results. Let's look at some requirement in the standard and regulation. Uh, the ISO 2004, 8.5 gives a very understandable and known uh, definition of competence, including experience, education, training, and skills, and uh, recording all these things. The United States regulation is going and giving the necessary background, training ex experience. The requirements are the same. Everything needs to be recorded. People need to be competent. Uh, one of the reasons I, I really love this standard, it is the clause 5, which is 5.1, which is talking about the personal competence and uh, education of the staff in the laboratories. Please look carefully. Uh, I remind you uh, that uh, the first issue is the risk management implementation, which is really addressing in the clause 446 and 447, which is really uh, talking about the quality indicators. And the last one, why this standard is my favorite, is really the competence assessment standard. Uh, requirement. This is really regulated and really gives a great idea how the competence assessment is to be managed and organized. In uh, laboratories, in healthcare organization, the competence assessment is very terrible to organize, very terrible to manage, and very terrible to implement it. This standard really gives a great idea how these things could be organized. And that's the reason I really recommended it to implement all this issue you will have. It. Risk management standard also requires some competence, knowledge, experience. Look here, because of the uh, internet of uh, techniques and risk management methodology need to be used. You need to have uh, experience and knowledge of uh, particular medical devices or similar medical devices. And this is a really very interesting issue. Another thing which is very important to address, this is the standard which is giving opportunity to establish the teams represented by several functions, which is for every risk management especially for the first step in risk management, meaning investigation and analysis of risk harms and risk. Uh, needs to be addressed and it's better need to be organized in the teams which is giving the better results of course. Knowledge is essential. Continuous education is important. And again, I will remind you on the Clinical Laboratory Standard Institute, which is really giving a great recommendation. This one for training and competence assessment is really a good one. Please read it, use it, you will have happy solve in your problem with this. You can train your people, you can educate your people on several different methods. Online learning webinars is one of the issues. I will just draw you, I have been very surprised, I spent a few months in the States last month, from January to March. From the colleagues with the experience, from the colleagues and the <laughs> universities, colleagues and the practice, I really understand that this is something which is really going on. I, I have no feeling that the Europe has so much implementation of uh, this type of learnings. They draw me attention, they point me that the consistency, the last one of the slide, is very important. It's very easy and it is not so much cheap to really have 
the continuous updating of the knowledge and uh, the sharing of the knowledge within the people and organizations within the expert in the group. I will just remind you, I forgot to tell you one of the basic issues, what is the interest. If you look at the LinkedIn group, medical device group, we have almost 300,000 people joined in the group in 19th section. It means that really experience, sharing experience, knowledge in this fund of a business is very important. Anyway, every standard needs some personal records of trainings, about price of performances, competence assessment, and of course, very capability of all this data. This is very important easy today. What will be the future? First of all, I'm trying to point you that uh, raising uh, influence of certification and accreditation are going on. Uh, certification and accreditation really need to be understood as a improvement tool. PDCL circle then circle is also present of course in every process. But let me draw you and show you just for the medical devices for example. If you really have a good connection between the clauses for one. Five four quality objectives. Seven one planning the processes in the producing or servicing medical devices. Eight two eight two eight two three with the monitoring. Taking care of the eight four and at the end with the continuous improvement, you will have a good system. The system is evaluated. The system is development and the system is going on. This, this is very important. And accreditation, the certification is helping that. The region accreditation concept, for example, as European EA, develop the strategy which is reinforce influence of accreditation and strengthening the use of accreditation anyway, basis for notification and international recognition, which would be very interesting. Thank you very much. I hope that uh, ISO will decide it at the end of this month and during this month what will be happen. Does the 30,000 April 5 will continue with the current content, the new version, or will change according to the Annex SL new concept of management standard developed with the ISO main time? It will not be a good idea, that's my personal opinion, if we have a difference in between the ISO 1001, which will be published September or October after voting in the ISO structure, and the ISO for medical devices, which will not address the same way the management system. Let's see. What will happen? BCI, for example, announced that in June it will be happen. Well, we will see. There is no information for the moment. It is we are expecting. If you look at the shadow at the program of the TC 210, this is the committee dealing with the medical devices. You will see that they have a lot of uh, standard, a lot of issues, a lot of activities preparing and we will be very happy to look at it and to have it to in uh, practice. It seems that the next year, 2016, will be the year when we have got a new standard. Regulators also are intending to be much more deeper involved in the standardization project and uh, involved in the assessing and implementation and recognition of the standards under the national regulation. And, and this is a very interesting activities which is going on. Generally, we need to consider the whole picture of certification and accreditation. It takes a going well, very well, last years. 
the degree of uh, drawing uh, is not so high. Medical devices is going well. It's 15 percentage in the year, but generally 4 percent for total certification business is not well. I'm positively sure that new version of standards, including old standards, will be give us opportunity to erase this mess and to change this situation. Accreditation, it is the same thing. We have in Europe just like in Central, we have uh, almost 1,200 more than 1,000 uh, 12, test, testing laboratories. Almost near 1,000 medical laboratories and a great amount of other laboratories which is going on. I think that will be a very good idea. And I will remind you of the European regulation talking on about scopes of accreditation for medical laboratories. It is year 4. 17, which is very interesting. Please look it when you find new scopes for accreditation of your laboratories. A lot of changes need to be done. I am positively sure that the answer of the question what happened to the concept uh, assessed once, assessed anywhere, uh, will not be on the cry from the industry and uh, accreditation will be here, will find the solution and the market will accept the situation. That uh, certificates and certification accreditation will not be only the pictures on the wall, which is showing the conformity, but the tools for changes. And I hope that the babies will not be the only people who is uh, happy with the changes. The risk assessment is the, another thing, another way of changes we really need to understand. And to continue with the risk management activities in all circle of life of the products and services. At the end, we really need to change in concept and philosophy to really try to prevent instead of solving the problems. And this would be a good idea for the future, I think. Thank you. That's all for my side. Vladimir, thank you for your great presentation. Due to the time limit, we are going to answer all your questions through email. You can check PCB's webinar schedule on our website at pcb.org. Additionally, you can find our recorded webinars in our YouTube channel. Please subscribe us if you want to receive the latest posts. Thank you very much for attending this webinar. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, have a good day. Yeah, I hope too, and we will uh, listen in the afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.